So who would have guessed one of the biggest questions that all Berserk fans asked when they got up to the latest chapter was that who is the Fairy King? What does the Fairy King look like? Who is he? What's his identity? I mean, that, that's a lot of the things that many Berserk fans have been asking for many, many years now. And to think, out of all things, it wasn't actually a fairy or slash elf king, but actually a fairy slash elf queen. And this... Honestly, I'm like, yo, when I read the end of the chat, I'm like, holy shit. So that is, that is the actual ruler of the entire island. It's a queen. And honestly, it doesn't come as a surprise in some ways, because I remember a couple of things from my, you know, discussions with Tokyo Ghoul, and I want to bring it up here, because it's actually relevant. So, if you were all unaware, which it was brought up at the time to when the One-Eyed King was going around in Tokyo Ghoul, many people were trying to figure out who is the One-Eyed King, who is it, like, who is the, you know, the person that was the One-Eyed King, and there came into many topics to where apparently in Japan, the writing of, you know, King is actually genderless. For instance, the entire name King is genderless in Japan, and that's what many were speculating about the One-Eyed King, like, is it a male or female? And it was brought up constantly, I remember those type of discussions in the past before we found out the identity, and I could talk about certain spoilers but the main point is is that the identity of the fairy king actually being a female it makes sense i mean if we actually could read kanji and japanese and stuff and you know actually read you know berserk in its real language i'm willing to bet we probably would have keyed in on that and it wouldn't have been as a surprise if we would have actually saw a female you know queen so i mean overall though the actual outcome of this is not surprising i think for the japanese fans that read the original source but i gotta say though it's something I was quite shocked about to think that it would actually be a female of all things and also to see how the person that we met in last week's chapter was actually the Fairy Queen. So I'm like, yo, okay, th this is a uh, 10 out of 10. I I'm fine with this. I I'm completely fine with this. But anyways, let's talk about one of the things this chapter brings up. And that would be gravity. Yeah, yeah, it, it brings up gravity. Now, there's a different title, you know, kind of applied to it. It's called like... Barretts or something like that. I, I can't pronounce the name. Fuck it. I'm not even going to try it at the moment. I'll, I'll look it up eventually. Just it, the main simplest term to apply to it is gravity. That That's exactly what it is. We found out in this chapter with some world building that apparently there's this certain minuscule like material or matter that m makes it to where all the elements like fire, wind, and water and stuff, it all links together thanks to this material, this minuscule element, which is gravity and because of this i'm like yo this is interesting so they're kind of like letting us know that there's something else going on in the world of berserk now obviously there's gravity in the series i mean that's common sense but apparently there's something else going on here that actually meshes everything together and in this place that currently where guts and his entire crew is at there's less gravity. And now, like I said, there's probably different reasons that separate this from gravity. I'm just calling it gravity for now because it's a simpler term to apply to it that makes sense. So, the entirety of the forest is less dense. That means that you weigh less, or you, at the very least, you feel like you can fly or you can jump higher. Which, this right here, I feel like is going to play something very important. Like, it's going to be something very important in the future of Berserk because of the way this was introduced in this forest alone. And it also let us know kind of probably future outcomes to when it feels like the air and everything is just, you know, pressing you down and you feel like you, there's just so much weight and you can't move properly it explains certain situations we actually have seen in the universe of berserk i mean think about it a lot of darker scenes in berserk it always has this dark atmosphere about it this dark presence and all this type of stuff going on and if you think about it like that it makes a lot of sense now that we you know found out about this material this element that apparently if it's very dense and in a location it's not good for very kind-hearted spirits but it can actually cause dark things to happen so because of this, I like the way this was introduced, the way this was kind of explained to us, and I feel like the way this was brought up, I'm willing to bet that Kintaro has a big plan for this material or this element in the future of the series, and most likely it already has something very big, it's already played like a big role in the series by now. I mean, if I was to go back and read some certain scenes of like Berserk and all that back to the darker moments and stuff, I'm willing to bet I might see some form of words or dialogue that references this type of element, which I'll have to do eventually. I, I will, it's fucking Berserk, I need to go back and see it. But getting back on point though, with this Reveal, though, it makes us actually assume one thing. As we know, Guts' entire sword, the, you know, the actual sword he carries, the Dragon Slayer, his sword is seeped in darkness. We know about this. We, we know there's something very off about his sword. We saw it a while back, and we know his sword it, it actually can harm immortals or people that are in the uh, lower depths of the abyss. We, we know about this. We know that Guts' sword is completely different thanks to it constantly cutting through demons. 
I'm willing to bet that that one moment in the past where Shirake was looking at Guts's blade and was uh, mentioning something, I'm willing to bet that Guts's blade is seeped in that dark, depressing atmosphere, which is that gravity wrapped around his blade. I remember a scene like that in that arc. I remember Shirake, it might not have been Shirake, actually, it could have been, you know, her teacher, but I remember one of the witches looking at it and staring at his blade and noticing something very off with his blade. I'm willing to bet you that probably is referencing this element right now that was introduced in this chapter. But I will leave that for now. Let's talk about one of the big topics that many are talking about. And I've already seen many already message me in my private PM box on YouTube and on Twitter. Many have been saying that Berserk has been boring. And I, 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 I got it. I, I got to talk about that. Like, okay. The reason why many are saying Berserk is boring is apparently because it's all kind and nice. Smiles and happiness. And I'm thinking like... That's not what Berserk is. Like, look, okay? Yes, I, I, granted, I do read Berserk because it is a dark and depressing series. I, I won't throw that aside. But Berserk is not just about the gore, the violence, the sex scenes, the rape, you know, all that type of stuff. It, it's not about that. It's not even about the action. It isn't. And I, I've seen many saying that this chapter and uh, recent chapters have been rather fucking bland or boring because it's just it, there's nothing going on or it's just too kind, too happy, or the comedy just is like, what? This ain't Berserk. And I got to disagree with that because, see, one of the big things about Berserk that we need to actually understand is that it's not always going to be violent. It's not always going to be a series where you're seeing, like, organs spread across the entire, you know, floor. You're not going to see that every time you read a chapter of Berserk. It's just not. That, that can't happen. And honestly, the way the arc has been in Berserk, this, like, current arc going on in this island, I'm really enjoying this arc. I'm really loving the world building this arc is giving us, especially with the mistletoe. With last chapter, the mistletoe, fucking, I love that shit. I love that when it comes to Berserk. But this, I, I just don't understand why many are actually thinking this arc is kind of eh. Because I, I feel like it's a nice, good change of pace. It's a breath of fresh air. Now, granted, it does feel weird seeing Guts walk around forest critters and all that. And, you know, he's just, he's completely out of place, which I'll get in that moment. But, I mean, I, I like this different tone that we're getting. Because if you think about the previous volumes, all the volumes we've gotten in Berserk, it's been very violent. There's a lot of volumes that are very violent. Look at, like, volume 37, like the volume that was the last English translated volume and all that. Go to that volume and look at it. It's a very dark, very dark volume. And I mean, if you really think about it like that, a lot of, you know, arcs of Berserk are dark. And we had a very dark arc recently. But with the new, you know, setting, with, you know, being in this, like, fantasy arc with all these, you know, fantasy creatures and mythology and stuff popping up now, getting to see, like, these fairies, these, you know, unicorns and stuff popping up, it makes sense that this would be a little bit different of an atmosphere for Berserk. And I am completely fine with that. And also, we shouldn't expect gruesome-looking shit in this island that apparently has been built built up for many, many years now, not just in chapters, but literally for years now for us waiting for new content to come out, we all knew that this island was going to be peaceful or something very kind and, you know, compassionate. So actually taking a moment to think about it like that, it makes sense that this island is like it is. So I just don't understand why many people are looking at Berserk recently saying, eh, it's boring, it's too kind-hearted and whatever, it's not Berserk. I just, I don't understand that. I, I really don't. I mean, everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own right to dislike certain things. I just, I don't see the opinion they're like, like, why you don't think it's berserk? Because it's kind hard. But I'll, I'll get off of that for now. So, Guts. Guts is apparently... He's out of place. M my boy Guts, oh my god. Like, I mean, we saw him smile a couple chapters back and all that, and we know he's here for a reason, to, you know, bring back Casca, which I've already talked about Casca. I've talked about, you know, what possibly could happen with Casca. Does she want to be healed? I've talked about all this before in my previous video, so I'm not going to dive into that. But Guts is completely out of place in this arc. Like, I mean, this man is just so out of place. I mean, the way he just stands out, it's just so different. I mean, you look at all these other characters, like Farnese, Casca, you know, Isidro, Puck, all, all of these characters characters, okay? They all fit in with the atmosphere of this arc. They fit in with this happy-go-lucky stuff. They fit in with the forest critters. They fit in with all these fantasy creatures and stuff. It just seems like it's something they should be used to or something that they could easily fit in with. But Guts is a man that's always known darkness. He's a man that's always known war. He's a man that's been fighting this mythological creatures for many, many years now, and he's had to cut them up, slice them up, do anything he possibly can to survive. And when you take a moment to think about this, this man is looking at all these creatures, and this is the first time in a very long time that he can actually look at creatures like this, this many creatures at once, that don't want to fucking murder him. Like, really, I mean, how out of place would you feel if you're walking into a forest, 
okay? And you're so used to walking the forest and zombies and shit want to eat you, okay? It guts is used to this. You walk into a forest and you see all these creatures looking at you, but they don't want to harm you. It, it, you feel out of place. You feel like, what the hell? It, it just, it feels so nerve-wracking. And I'm willing to bet you right now, Guts was probably on edge, majority of this chapter, willing to cut some bitches up, because he's just so used to demons coming after him, trying to eat him. So it's just, it's very odd and funny to see Guts out of, like, you know, his normal atmosphere that we all obviously always see him in, and seeing him in this type of atmosphere in the recent, you know, chapters of Berserk, it actually makes me happy to see him out of, out of his, like, normal atmosphere. So yeah, I, I do like the direction that this arc is taking Guts' character, but also, I do like another thing that happened in this chapter, and that would be also the little scene with Puck. I, I like how the Puck scene with the person that, I forget that dude's, oh my god, it's been a forever since I've actually fought about that dude's name. It was mentioned in this chapter, but I honestly never really get, give a shit about the character, please forgive me. But I'm talking about the dude that wants, you know, the elves for a certain plot. I think he wanted to sell the elves or something. Oh god, it, it's been a long time. It, it's been a really long time. I need to reread my chapters of Berserk, you know, my Berserk volumes, but, uh, I mean, I never really cared about that character, but I do appreciate that that wasn't forgotten and that was brought up in this chapter. And getting to see Puck trying to do things and stuff and doing this in the comedy manner like he did, where he's like, I am the king and all that, and he sat in the chair. It was something I had a good laugh at. I do actually appreciate the way this was, you know, carried over from the previous, you know, I guess volumes of Berserk and how it wasn't forgotten and thrown aside. It was actually given time to be displayed in this chapter. So I do appreciate that. It's something I do really like to see. Now speaking of art and liking to see, oh my god, the art. Oh, oh, oh my god. Okay, so I mean, it, it's not nothing new. We know that Kentaro, he could draw. He like th This man, the way he draws, it, he's, he's an architect, okay? Th this man's drawings are beautiful. So beautiful. But the art this man is doing, like, the art he is doing in these latest chapters, you could just see the improvements. Like, I think Achievement told me recently in the comments, it could have been the last chapter of the chapter beforehand, Achievement was letting me know that apparently Kintaro switched from his normal hand-drawn art style to digital recently. Apparently he's gone digital, and recently he's trying to actually get better at digital, so it's kind of like he's a novice or he's a noob at being a digital artist. And if that is the truth, oh my god! I I can't even imagine how good this man is going to be in maybe 15 chapters from now. I, I just can't even imagine. Even one chapter, you already see the improvements with the designs of the characters by the chapter. Because, I mean, he has a month to work on each chapter. And just looking at the artwork, like each individual chapter, you could just see the progression of how much he's growing with this digital art style he's been getting into. So, yes, Kentaro, continue doing what you're doing. I mean, I just gotta say, I like the new direction with your art style. I mean, it's a little bit different. It's like off-putting compared to what it was in the past. But I do like the style. I like how the background have been recently. The backgrounds really stand out, and I love how all the characters, like, the entire cast, is in one panel. Like, usually, you know, when you read a manga, any manga, pick up any random manga, shonen manga, saying manga, it doesn't matter. You pick up a random manga, usually if you have a conversation between characters or something, it's between panels. Like, let's say, let, let's use a good example. Let's just bring up One Piece, okay? Yeah, let's just say Luffy, Nami, and Chopper were talking with each other, okay? You would have it to where Luffy would be one panel, he would be talking, saying something, and then all of a sudden you switch over to another panel, not in the exact same panel, but another panel, you'll have Nami saying something to Luffy, and then a panel underneath that, you'll have it to where Chopper says something to reply to both of them. And when you think about it like that, the way Berserk and the way Kentaro adds in all these characters into one picture, one panel, and you have it to where they're all carrying on the conversation, talking about certain individual things, while the backgrounds look absolutely beautiful, it's a hard feat. You don't see that much, and I just gotta, I gotta compliment at the man for the glorious artwork he's been putting in these recent chapters, especially in this chapter. The chapter looked beautiful, really did. It's going to be hard to choose what I want from my, you know, thumbnail. So let's talk about the, you know, Elf Queen. So the Elf Queen, her design, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just going to say, oh shit. <laughs> it's just her design, 10 out of 10. So can she heal Casca? That is the question. I mean, there, there's most likely a chance. Will she do it? That's another question. Now, does Casca want to be healed? Another question. Will Guts most likely still want to heal Casca? Most likely. So, here's the thing. What is going to happen? I mean, th there's a lot of things that can happen here. I mean, Casca gets healed, okay? She gets healed, what then? Like, I mean, what what's the goal? I mean, obviously, it's not going to be, you know dandelions. It's just not going to be, you know, friendship and all that. You know, Casca probably is going to have nightmares. She's probably going to remember everything, and she's going to be like normal, and she might even go back into the state of a baby again, because, I mean, look, what Casca went through 
is something not normally people can deal with. I mean, Guts is a rare example. This man, he's just, he's carried on by sheer, uh, sheer willpower. This man has just trucked along thanks to his hard iron will. And not many people can be like Guts. So Casca breaking, it makes a lot of sense, especially if you think about what happened to her in the eclipse, watching all her friends die and all that. I mean, it, it makes sense. And I mean, th there is a possibility if Casca does get healed, she could revert back into the baby state once again because she just wants to not remember. She doesn't want to confront this problem. Or she... This is a dark. This is something dark to say. And it's controversial what I'm about to say. But there is a possibility that, I mean, th this is berserk. So, I mean, it, it is a possibility. But there is a possibility that if Casca remembers everything, okay, and she knows she can't go back and hide again back into her baby state, she might... It's... Please forgive me, but she might take her life. That is a very possible outcome. I mean, when people are overcome by a lot of stress and shit, especially what Costco went through, it's, it's a likely possibility she might want to end it. I mean, or she might not want nothing to do with Guts. She might blame Guts for something. Maybe she'll hate him for healing her. So many things that can happen. So, because of this, we don't know what could possibly happen. Things can go dark rather quickly. And speaking of dark, this forest is gonna burn. I <laughs> sense this forest just getting burnt to the ground. I've talked about it when we were first introduced everything, but this forest is definitely gonna get burnt. I, I see it happening because just... Even though I'm enjoying the pleasant, kind arc we're getting right now, there's just no way something as peaceful as this is gonna remain peaceful. It just, it's not gonna happen. It, it, that's not how Berserk is. It, it won't stay peaceful for long. So I sense very soon, something is gonna happen. If it's not, you know, Griffith for his demons or something messing with them, because we found out about the mistletoe and stuff, but it's not Griffith and all that fucking with this island, then there's something else that's gonna happen. That's gonna be very bad. And I can't wait to find out, because I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm willing to bet you we need to kind of appreciate all this kind-hearted stuff we're getting right now, because I'm willing to bet you we're going to probably see all these little, you know, innocent creatures and stuff getting massacred, maybe 15, 20 chapters down the road. So, just take a moment to breathe and realize that we need to appreciate the kindness we get right now until shit hits the fan. Anyways, you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi